Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Are you interested in keeping a boa constrictor but concerned that it's too big of a snake for you? Well, there's actually a number of different types of dwarf boa constrictors, and these animals reach adult sizes of only about three and a half to five feet. Today I'm going to show you several types of these dwarf boa constrictors, as well as discuss their natural history and their care in captivity. If you're interested in learning about keeping and breeding boas in captivity and want to see lots of examples of these beautiful constrictors, please be sure to subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel right now so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming boa videos. One of the widest misconceptions about boa constrictors is that they're giant snakes, and this simply is not true. The largest boa constrictors are about 13 feet or so, but these are extremely rare, and I would say that's more in the range of an extra large snake, not really a true giant like a python. And most adult boas are in the six to nine foot range, and the types we're gonna to see today are only in the three and a half to five foot range as adults. So really they're no bigger than many commonly kept pet snakes like ball pythons, corn snakes, and king snakes. Boa constrictors are amazing creatures when it comes to their biology and the, studying their evolution is one of the reasons I'm so interested in locality boas. The types of boas we're gonna to see today have evolved to an environment that in general has limited food and other resources. So they've, they've evolved this small size in response to the limited amount of food that's available. The first dwarf boa might be the smallest boa of them all, and that's the Tar Humara Mountain boa from Northern Mexico. This is an adult male, he's about 10 years old, and he's just under four feet in length. The adults of these get to be somewhere between three and a half and four and a half feet. Very compact, small size. Uh, you know, looking at him, you can see he's got these beautiful dark colors, lots of different shades of brown, including caramel, mocha, chocolate brown, lots of, you know, nice shades here. Beautiful looking animal. They also often have a lot of pink to them as well, and even some greenish bluish highlights. They're really gorgeous looking animals. A lot of people might see them and at first think that they're just these kind of boring looking boas, but really the colors are breathtaking. So these animals are uh, one of the northernmost types of boa constrictors, getting pretty close to the US border. And they've adapted to the sky islands of habitat in the mountains above the surrounding desert. So uh, there's you know cooler temperatures and uh, moisture climate in these mountain habitats in Northern Mexico. And there's a limited amount of food uh, supplies there. So the animals have evolved to go long periods without eating and to these small adult sizes. Personality wise, these tar humar boas have really cool spunky personalities. Often as babies, they do hiss a little bit, but they rarely if ever bite. It's just all for show and it's actually quite entertaining. And as adults, they're typically pretty chill uh, they're not one of the most active boas. They just kind of hang out. You know, they do move around, but you know, they're not as active as some of the other types of boas, which could be a plus if you're looking for an animal that doesn't need a lot of space and that's going to be content in a relatively small enclosure. So the Tar Humara Mountain Boa is one of my all-time favorite locality boas and highly recommended for someone looking for a small boa that they can keep in a relatively small enclosure. There's a few other localities of dwarf Mexican boas that I just briefly wanted to mention. And these include the Sonoran Desert Boa from northwestern Mexico, as well as the Tamaulipas Cloud Forest Boa from northeastern Mexico. And both of these boas are similar in size and appearance to the Tarjimara Boa, and they can be kept in a similar fashion. So definitely worth checking out for some other cool Mexican dwarf locality boas. Next, we're gonna be moving to the islands of Central America, which are rich habitats for the evolution of dwarf locality boas. And the first is the Qualqui boa from a small island off the coast of Belize. So at some point, many thousands of years ago, a small group of animals from the mainland made it to this small island. And in response to the limited food supplies, they evolved to this small size. And the adult Qualqui boas are 
only slightly larger than the adult Tarhi Maraboas in the four to five foot range. Another distinguishing characteristic of the Kral Kiboa is this coloration. They have this beautiful silvery steel gray color to them. They're almost a natural anorthristic boa. The baby uh, Kral Kis sometimes have a little bit of red, but it tends to fade out over time. And the adults are just this uniform silvery gray in coloration. These animals are a little more active than the Tarahumara boa, so you can see he's moving around a little bit more. They're also a little more elongated and more adapted for life in the trees. Um, they eat a lot of birds in their wild habitat, and one of the main food supplies for these animals are the seasonal migrations of birds that come through the islands for a few months out of the year. Qual key boas are really enjoyable to handle. This guy in particular, this is a seven-year-old male who sired his first litter of babies this year. Just an enjoyable animal to handle because he moves around but not too much and he holds on but not too tight. So just a great boa. You know, you can, I can hold them in one hand. It's a kind of like a pint-sized boa that has all of the behaviors and all of the cool traits of the larger boa constrictors, the Qual Key boa. Another dwarf island boa from Belize that's available in the boa hobby is the Cocker Key boa. And Cocker Key boas are superficially pretty similar to Qual Key boas, but there are some differences. So the first is that overall they're a little bit darker in coloration. So the ground color tends to be a little bit darker of a shade of gray. The saddles are, tend to be more of a blackish coloration and the shape of the saddles tends to be a little bit more blocky and a little bit bigger than in the crawl key boa. The other uh, difference is the shape of the body. They tend to be a little bit less elongated and a little bit thicker around uh, than the, uh, the crawl key. And in general, they're maybe a little bit more muscular. They like to hold on a little bit more. So you can see this female is kind of gripping my hand pretty tightly. Not, I wouldn't call them squeezy. She's not cutting off the circulation. But behaviorally, they just like to hold on a little bit more than the uh, crawl key boa. But besides those differences, superficially, they're similar. They're both uh, naturally anorithristic looking boas from small islands off of the coast of Belize. And the husbandry of the two is also quite similar. I'm gonna show you one more dwarf boa from an island off the coast of Central America. And that's the Corn Island boa. And so these animals, like the other types of dwarf boas that we saw, reach an adult size of about four to five feet. There's a couple characteristics of the Corn Island boas that are unique to boas. The first is the coloration. As you can see, these animals have this dark olive greenish top half, and then their belly has a lot of uh, reddish orange coloration to them. They're really unique looking and colored boas. This guy is actually going to shed. He's maybe a little bit dull right now, but once he sheds, his colors are gonna be quite a bit brighter. So in addition to the unique coloration, the behavior of these animals is also quite unique. They tend to be one of the most active forms of boas. They just, they don't like to sit still. They're always moving around and searching and, um, you know, in the wild, they are highly arboreal in, in habitat and live in the trees. And in captivity, when you take them out, they're gonna move around a lot. It's kind of like holding a king snake or some other type of colubrid. They don't like to sit still. So I wouldn't say they're aggressive. I've never been bitten by my Corn Island boas, but behaviorally they definitely like to move around quite a bit. So that's the Corn Island boa, a unique dwarf island boa from an island off the coast of Honduras. One last locality boa that's in the dwarf boa class that I'm going to show you is the Paraguanera or Paraguana Peninsula boa from Venezuela. And these are really great boas. They actually live on this Peninsula, and if you look at a map of South America, the Paraguana Peninsula is this kind of round body of land, maybe 50 miles in diameter, but it's at the end of this really long, really skinny peninsula. So they're very isolated from boas from the mainland of Venezuela. And what's really interesting is they show characteristics 
of both boa imperator, the common boa, and boa constrictor constrictor, the true red tail boa. And if you look at a distribution map of those two species, it kind of makes sense. So they have um, kind of a head shape and body shape that's similar to the common boa, but looking at the animal's coloration and contrast, it's more reminiscent of the true red tail boa. You can see even their tails, they have this beautiful dark red tail, but just the high contrast between the red and the black and the white on the tail. They're just beautiful animals. One other characteristic they share with BCC is the musculature. So these are really muscular little animals. You can see how he's holding on there. You can see his kind of squarish body. This is an adult male. This guy is about five years old or so. And he's maybe four feet long, but really cool boa. If you're looking for a small boa uh, that has a lot of great characteristics and is beautiful to look at. They're relatively hard to find, but they are available occasionally. And I hope to have some babies from my peregrine era boas uh, in the next couple of years. Another really cool thing about the peregrine era boa is there's a naturally occurring morph, and that's the anerythristic peregrine era boa, like this guy. These animals naturally lack the red and orange pigment, so they have this beautiful silvery gray coloration. So this guy is definitely one of my favorites in the collection, just beautiful, beautiful animal. And take a look at that tail, just this beautiful grayish silvery coloration there. Just absolutely gorgeous. A lot of the anerythristic boas that I've seen kind of wash out and they're, they're more of a brownish color as adults. But this guy definitely has retained his beautiful silvery color. Um, I really like the pattern of these peregrine air boas as well. They're this really cool pattern and saddle shape and the high contrast that's associated with the boa constrictor constrictor, even though they are technically a boa imperator. So just a great boa locality. I wanted to end the video by just saying a little bit about the husbandry of these dwarf boa constrictors. So in general, their husbandry requirements are similar to the larger boa constrictors, except of course, you can maintain them in smaller sizes. And I keep and breed a lot of my dwarf locality boas in homemade rack systems using different size tubs. Um, including the Iris CB110 under the bed storage tubs, as well as these Vision Boa tubs. These are 30 by 40 inch uh, in size, about 11 inches deep. And they're a really great size for keeping adult dwarf locality boas. The other thing is you definitely don't want to overfeed these guys. They've evolved to live in the wild on a very sparse diet so as adults, you probably want to feed them about once every four weeks or so. I would feed the babies a little bit more frequently than that, probably about every two weeks for the first two years. Then you want to go back to about once every three weeks from years uh, when they're like two to five years old, and then go to the once every four weeks as adults. And also you don't want to feed them food items that are too large. The food items should leave a barely visible bulge. For example, this guy who's about four feet, he's on small rats, and I'll probably move him to medium rats, and that's what he's gonna eat as an adult. Uh, his guy's about five years old right now. So I hope this was helpful. I have videos on all these different localities that I've done previously, so if you wanna check out a full-length video on any of the dwarf football localities, you can do that. As always, let me know if you have any questions or comments. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.